Hello and welcome to a midweek Wardy's Waffle Farm update. I'm in our spring barley um, uh, direct drilling demo uh, field and uh, we're going to have a good look at this uh, in the second part of this update because I haven't been here for a while so this will be the last look and update before harvest and I must admit I haven't been in here on purpose for probably three weeks just to see how they're progressing and I must admit um, it, I'm pleasantly surprised as is quite a few people who've been to see this field over the last couple of weeks um, and if you've been to see them um, great thank you for the phone calls thank you for the messages and uh, and appreciate all the kind comments about the uh, drilling day and how how valuable you found it anyway on to this week's update before we get into looking at all these plots um, I'm going to be looking at the continuation of our uh, all seed rape uh, store that we're filling that also uh, I take some chemical cans uh, all our last year's chemical cans to a recycling center and uh, also we have an ecology the center of ecology uh, for the country came to do a study uh, on our soils and things for the farm the last time they were here was many many years ago so we also talked to the guys there and take a look at that so some really interesting things in the, in this week's update um, and uh, and apologise for the breeze. I haven't got my microphone here with the muffle on it. So if you've got a little bit of background wind noise, there is a bit of breeze here. I apologise for that. But uh, I think you can hear OK. Anyway, uh, without any more, let's get into this week's update and hope you enjoy it. Please click like, subscribe and the bell sound. And here we go. Getting this shed full now, tipping in the doorway. Another lorry on the way bridge waiting to tip. Also need the concrete panels in here. Ruben's just blowing all around under the trailer so we don't litter rape all around the yard. It grows everywhere. All these cracks in the concrete, they'll grow. Under the suspension's a big place. Huh? Got a tractor and trailer rolled up with uh, some rape. We've got a few of those coming in today. And then we've just put this concrete panel in the doorway now and so we're tipping in the elevator now so we'll tip this lorry in and then pull the elevator out probably we might get another trailer load in and push it up and then uh, put the elevator back in again so it just takes a bit more doing when you're near the doorway but it does work That's it, yeah, plenty of room in here yet, round here, and then round that side. Ruben's just taking the elevator away from this shed here. I'm just gonna push up now so we can get a bit more in over the top and round the corner. The beauty of having a long blade, that's six metres long. But you can just see now when we've got the concrete panels in, there's a, gun, there's a bit there that we can't fill, no matter how much we push up, there's an area there we can't fill. The only way of doing that would be to have elevators in the shed roof. got two people with me here this morning a very very good friend of mine Jane Craigie Jane is responsible for Rhonda and I getting together but that's another story which we won't go into for, for this for this video and uh, so we have Denise Denise Hello. here from the Centre of Ecology the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology and um, a few years ago was it 2007 you were last here 2007 we were last here and uh, this is based on a project that's been going since the 1970s in which they're looking at one kilometre squares across the UK. Um, just habitat mapping and looking at hedges and various other um, parts. We originally looked at streams and roadside verges yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So um, when you came here last time, you were saying about the hedges and a lot of the features weren't as advanced. You've seen them change over that time? Definitely, I've noticed that there's uh, more growth yeah. higher um less gaps mm. that sort of thing you could tell last time there were a lot of newly planted hedges yeah 
and we also have photographic evidence of, of that as well. What's the big survey? So what's the, uh, the goal with this work? It's just to look at general changes over the countryside. So we don't tell you where the plots are particularly because we don't want you to make particular changes and saying, oh, we've got this special plot that someone's coming to look at. Right. We want to see what, what's going on, what changes are happening just when people are doing what they're normally doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, there are influences of agri-environment mm, schemes mm, and things like this. Mm. Andy, have you changed what you've done over the years dependent on the agri-environment scheme that you've been in? Um, not not too much. We've we've put more areas in maybe that have, have um, wet areas, should I say? So we've gone into mid tier and gone into the um, winter bird food plots. So some of them that we'll show you today, they they uh, were fresh in at the last scheme, so five years ago. Um, and but mainly we've got them all in for ease of spraying because I don't want to be going around the fields and saying right, I can't spray full rate of that of that. Um, plant protection product you know, near that dike or oh, I've got to use a different nozzle so I just thought it easier to put the whole six meters next to every single around every single field and then we've no need to worry about what we're, what we're doing we're, we're within the regulation so I'm with the the rest of this team here looking at the, the structure of the farm and the soils and the changes so we'll just have a word and just see what they've done so what what's the purpose of this whole exercise it's basically to monitor changes in the vegetation and in the soils in the British countryside yeah and so it's a long-term monitoring project which started 1978 and so ever since then we've revisited the same one kilometer squares in the britain and so in 1978 84 1990 1998 2007 and again no. this year yeah. and we're basically recording what we call an X plot, which is like a square, which is 14 meters by 14 meters. Well, and within so so you're, you're, you're doing this square 14 meters by 14 meters. Yes. And so that there, that's the center point. That's the center point, yes. And around that, like the peels of an onion, we do increasingly larger quadrants until we reach the full scale. Right. That enables us to look at how plant species richness changes over the, the area. Yeah. And basically these exact plots get revisited on every occasion, like every 10 years or so when right. we come back. So we can actually get a detailed comparison with what was here in the past. And you're looking at all plants in the ground, We're are you? We're looking at higher plants and mosses, yes. Right. So, and my colleague Pete is taking soil samples yep. from within the quadrant. And so we um, basically those get analyzed for nutrients, carbon and microbial um, aspects. And, and I know we were um, talking yesterday and you said I, I, I won't be able to see the full report but I'll be able yeah. to see some of it, is that right? Yeah, that's right, like a summary for this yeah. one kilometre square. Yeah, Yes. because it'd be interesting to see such as organic matter, would I be able to see those? That, that should be included. Because yes. that'll be really yeah. useful because mm -hmm. like I said we've had the whole farm uh, mapped yeah. and scanned for organic matter and sand silt yeah. and clay and and, uh, yeah. and and for organic matter and it'd be interesting to see whether yeah. you get the same readings as agri. Oh yeah I mean organic matter is a point in question like basically what we found in the monitoring for one, one of the headline statistics yeah. is like since 1978 um, organic matter in agricultural soils has dropped by about 11 percent so that's one of the findings of this long -term really? study as well yeah. and, uh, across Britain. Yeah. So, I mean, your farm might be different because you're doing many things actively to increase organic matter. Yeah. So, and so your farm is for us, it's a random sort of sample point for all the farms in Britain, basically. Right. How many farms in total? How many sites in um, total? We've got 501 kilometer squares we want to revisit in a five year, year period. Five teams of surveyors in Scotland, Wales and England. And we, we do about 100 squares a year. So. It's a total of 500 squares in the five year period. And that's a good sort of web. And those are se um, selected representatively. So basically that they would not all be farmland. Some of them would be woodland. Some might be salt marsh, some, you know, um, oh, and, but right. it's sort of, mm. it's what we call an unbiased sample. So yeah. the amount of squares with predominantly woodland is reflects the overall amount of woodland in Britain. So farmland will be sampled more because most of Britain is farmland. Hedgerows are a good example in question. Because, for example, historically we saw this drop in hedgerows between 1984 and 99, and then we could inform government policy with that, and they tried to bring in agri-environment measures. So we would so encouraging farmers to plant more. So basically, this data is used for fundamental research, but it also given to UK or British, the British government, and maybe regional governments and. 
also with the, I think the public can have access to some in or to it in some form and it's very nice here already you've got these white margins in the, on this farm for example and the wildflower strip we surveyed yesterday with lots of knapweed flowering and bed straw and so on that was really the, the, nice they've, they've been established since 2005 yeah so they've been in a long while they're doing very well then yeah mm. so they've been basically because sometimes you know after a few years you, ne you still need to manage them yes. to maintain their quality and yeah. it seems to be looking very good here yeah yeah so yeah i mean we hope some feature you know s sort of a balance between food production and other aspects sort of that's what yeah. you hope for a lot of different subjects so two years ago we did a project on that's the ambicopter flying over, the Lynx and Knots ambicopter. <laughs> so we've got Jane in the cab, we're now heading to Lincoln. I have got a trailer full of old chemical containers. We're going to take them to a recycling centre in Lincoln. Jane's doing this podcast for BSF and we're going to yep. have a bit of a chat. Here we are, farming, biggest job on earth. Yep. Brilliant. And uh, so we're going to have a bit of a chat on the way and uh, carry on with this podcast. So we've just weighed in, we're just going now to tip the containers. There's the chap waiting to see us. So just tipping the trailer up so we can see underneath because the guy wants us to back in the shed. And it's a lot easier if you can see underneath the trailer because uh, you can see where you're going then. So that's the uh, job done now and these containers are sorted. I've got the paperwork here, which I will need for my red tractor audit when we come to have it done next February, March time, because without this, um, it'll be a non-conformance, so it won't get passed, but that is needed for red tractor next year. And altogether, the weight of the whole lot, I don't know what you can see there, 440 kilograms. So the whole year's worth of chemical containers was 440 kilograms in total, so just under half a tonne. All go here this afternoon, more rape coming in, which is great. The quicker we get these sheds full, the better. Just back at Bailey Trailers, just picking these combine bits up. You can see there's a lot of trailers in the yard here, some half-built ones down there. And uh, yeah, they're waiting for bits, apparently. They're waiting for some rams to come, I think so there's a lot on here at the minute and here are the parts that they've done you can see the hard ox steel they've put on and uh, this is on the wearing part this is where it runs on the floor all the time so we'll get these on the combine and uh, then we'll hopefully have a crack and get started plenty of tires and wheels all lined up waiting to go on new trailers here one or two in for some repairs by the look of it One thing we need to do before we start harvesting is get all the fields on a plan uh, on Gatekeeper and then put them on a, a memory stick and put them in the combine so that when we go in uh, all the various fields, Reuben will select the right field and then it automatically puts that crop into the right stock in Gatekeeper. So feed wheat will go in one uh, area against um, the skyscraper, which is another wheat, spring barley, another area. So when they go into the stock, when we've combined everything, all the tonnages from all the fields lad up and be the correct amount. So these are all the jobs I've already just set up for the various fields and the various crops. I've got down to job nine at the minute. So I'm just going to set um, spring barley up and I go into uh, add job at the top. Comes up that screen. Click that down there. Then I want the spring barley. We've only got three fields of spring barley. So I click that. All those are highlighted, send them across to there, brings them in, click OK. 
comes up with the list of the stock. I want RW Spring Barley Malt there, because that's what it is. Send that across to there. Everything's there, obviously, rate and quantity is zero at the minute because we haven't combined it. Click OK, then I click the machine, and here we're going combining, and I've got the combine set up for all the different crops because it costs us a different amount to combine spring barley to oats to a spring wheat to winter wheat. Depends, um, uh, obviously, the crops are all different thicknesses. This is linked into fuel, and also the trailer cost is in there. So I just um, click that as in yes down there. So straight away here, we've got, you see down there, RW Spring Barley Malt, and we've got the associated cost implement, as in combine harvest, spring barley there, and that's what it um, costs us. I've got to put the new fuel in uh, at the minute for this year's prices, but that's at 60p a litre it costs us to harvest uh, per hectare, and also includes two tractors and trailers. Uh, and then I just click save down the bottom there, and then straight away, that's put an extra job in here, job 10, and here's the fields. Uh, so that's how we do it. So I'll finish that, and then we transfer it from here onto a memory stick and into the combine. So this is an overview of all the plans I've just done, all the various crops. You can see spring oats, and they've got the spring oat combine. That's 90-90, that's our model. That's how I differentiate it between this combine and the, and the last one we had. Here's all the various fields, the various jobs. So if I just scroll down there, you'll just see the various jobs I've set up. And job 10 at the bottom, that's the one you've just seen me do. I've got another uh, one or two to do. Spring beans, uh, I think, uh, is the last one. One thing we need to do before we start harvesting is get all the fields on a plan uh, on Gatekeeper and then put them on a, a memory stick and put them in the combine so that when we go in uh, all the various fields, Ruben will select the right field and then it automatically puts that crop into the right stock in Gatekeeper. So feed wheat will go in one uh, area against um, the skyscraper, which is another wheat, spring barley, another area. So when you go into the stock, when we've combined everything, all the tonnages from all the fields will add up and be the correct amount. So these are all the jobs I've already just set up for the various fields and the various crops. I've got down to job nine at the minute. So I'm just gonna set um, spring barley up and I go into uh, add job at the top, comes up that screen, click that down there. Then I want the spring barley. We've only got three fields of spring barley. So I click that, all those are highlighted, send them across to there, brings them in, click okay. Comes up with the list of the stock. I want RW spring barley malt there, cause that's what it is. Send that across to there. Everything's there, obviously, rate and quantity is zero at the minute because we haven't combined it. Click OK, then I click the machine, and here we're going combining, and I've got the combine set up for all the different crops because it costs us a different amount to combine spring barley to oats to a spring wheat to winter wheat. Depends, um, uh, obviously, the crops are all different thicknesses. This is linked into fuel, and also the trailer cost is in there. So I just um, click that as in yes down there. So straight away here, we've got, you see down there, RW Spring Barley Malt, and we've got the associated cost implement, as in combine harvest, spring barley there, and that's what it um, costs us. I've got to put the new fuel in uh, at the minute for this year's prices, but that's at 60p a litre it costs us to harvest uh, per hectare, and also includes two tractors and trailers. Uh, and then I just click save down the bottom there, and then straight away, that's put an extra job in here, job 10, and here's the fields. Uh, so that's how we do it. So I'll finish that, and then we transfer it from here onto a memory stick and into the combine. So this is an overview of all the plans I've just done, all the various crops. You can see spring oats, and they've got the spring oat combine. That's 90-90, that's our model. That's how I differentiate it between this combine and the, and the last one we had. Here's all the various fields, the various jobs. So if I just scroll down there, you'll just see the various jobs I've set up. And job 10 at the bottom, that's the one you've just seen me do. I've got another uh, one or two to do. Spring beans, uh, I think, uh, is the last one. I went on Twitter um, this morning and just asked a question about flails for our, our coon uh, offset grass mower. Because one of the problems we've got, and some of you have seen from my videos, we've got these black thorn suckers coming out from the hedge in all our stewardship areas. Now this margin here has been established for a good long while, 15 years. But you can see here, we're getting all these plants growing 
well out. This is like three metres out from the hedge and we need to take them off. Otherwise, our hedge is going to end up being probably five metres wide. So we need to cut these in the autumn when we're allowed on these margins. And the flails we've got at the minute, and I'll put a picture up, these flails that are on it at the minute just seem to strip one or two of these outer, outer branches on here, off here, but they leave the middle stem. And you can see, you know, there's my little finger. So you can see they're not very big, these stems. And it just leaves them standing. It lays them flat and then come back up again um, in a week's time. And uh, I'm looking for some flails to go on our coon mower that will actually strip this in one go. Now, I've been told hammer flails are the ones we want uh, and uh, rather than these curved ones that you've just seen of ours. Um, I've also been told you want the Y flails, back-to-back -back Y flails, so to make an uh, upside down Y with a vertical one down the middle to end up with three. But then, then people say that, or Coon said, no, they're not suitable for our mower, but they'll offset and balance the rotor. So I really don't know I'm at a quandary because we need to st start, need, these need trimming down this winter, and, uh, or before the winter rather, when it's you know, dry enough to go on these margins. And we need some more flails for the Coon mower, and I don't know really which to go for. I've had so many Suggestions. Thank you for those people who have replied to me and given us some suggestions, but uh, I just don't know which way to go at the minute. So anybody uh, who sees this and they've got some ideas, then please come back to me. Thank you. So here we've got the headlands, the outside of the field. If you remember, this was very compacted. This is where all the drills were running up and down. And we went through with the elita and low disturbance uh, sort of subsoil. It moved it before we drilled it with our free flow. And when you look at this, plenty of ears of barley here. They're necking over. They're still not ready though. They're still quite green, some of them you can see, but they are getting getting that way. I'd have thought maybe another two weeks and they might be ready. Um, but yeah, these are the, this is the outside that we drilled with our free flow all through there. So quite pleased with that. So now onto the actual plots themselves. This is the free flow plot. Looking quite good, really. A good number of ears. It wasn't uh, um, the top in the league table of uh, ear counts or rather, rather um, should I say, plant counts. Uh, we have done some ear counts, but haven't got the results yet. And uh, this was about number four or five, halfway down, I think. But looking quite good. Good number of ears, uh, you can see. But I think the soil disturbance here was greater at drilling, which enabled it to pick up the nitrogen um, sooner uh, that we put on with the glyphosate. So I think that's why uh, looking quite uh, better, and I think that might have an effect on yield. Anyway, this side, uh, we're looking at the area that was straw harrowed, and you can just see there is an area up there where that line is just where my finger is it's harrowed from this tram line up to there so um yeah that has made a little bit of difference we're on the area here uh that was that's done before the rain we're now in the area that was done uh after dinner when we had the rain some of you came remember so again not quite as good here and uh the plant counts did actually see that so yeah a bit thinner here when you can see looking at the uh, ear counts oh, sorry looking at the uh, plant thickness next plot we've got here is the weaving saber tine this has always looked good uh, right from when it came through and uh yeah good number of ears as well uh, there was more ears here more plants than the free flow quite an even good crop there and this is the side that was uh hasn't got the straw harrow and done before lunch so in good conditions this side is the straw harrow and you can just see here from here up to there uh, again you can see the line so it's made a little bit of a difference there but this is the area before lunch and then after lunch when we had the rain this is it now and you can just see here not quite as good just see a few gaps up there but again not so many gaps where the straw harrow uh, has been so again made a bit of difference but yeah uh, good good drill this and it's made uh, made a good job of these uh, these plots now into the next uh, drill and this is the amazon cayenna and these gaps here because of the tram lining mechanism was that was on every breed which is a shame but when you look again decent uh, uh, establishment good number of ears and plants uh, and when you look here nice even crop good ears and this is the side that um, was done before lunch so this had got uh, uh, this was in the good conditions then when we go this side this is where the straw harrow had been not quite so much evidence of uh, you can see here but then when we get now this is the line where we went to after lunch where we had the rain and not such good conditions you can just see by the color you've got more ears stood upright so the darker color is where the ears are upright so this will be quite a while off uh, off being harvested this plot actually looks when you see 
yeah, you can just see it's it's probably the, the least fittest of, of all of them. But still not bad uh, when you look, considering how wet it was. Next plot is the Dale Eco six metre trailed tine drill. And um, again, not not uh, not bad. There's a few little holes here and there, but uh, still quite a good number of ears and uh, plant density. This is a side uh, that has not had the straw harrow and before lunch. Then going on to here, you can just see a bit more unevenness. This is the area that's been harrowed, which is a bit odd. It's showing up like that. And then if we walk a bit further down, this now is the area here that was done after lunch. And you can just see here, definite difference here. See by the colour of it and everything here. Um, and the bits of wheat coming through, it definitely is a bit thinner just here. And uh, so, uh, yeah, but again, long way off being ready, that one. Now we're into the first of the strip drills. This is the Clayton. And I must say, this plot's just improved all the time right from drilling. It didn't look very special for a start, but it's just evened up quite a lot and uh, looking quite level and... Yeah, I must admit, surprised me actually when you look at this, considering how it went in. So uh, this is the area that was done uh, before lunch without the straw rake and then turned around after lunch. And uh, this was with the straw rake. And uh, I must admit, it did improve the, the plant counts, the straw rake. But when you look at it there, it didn't too much when you look at it in, in that light. And then moving a bit further along, we are now in a second just in the area here where we still did it after lunch when we'd had some rain and definite difference here you can see tractor wheelings through there and it just doesn't look quite as good as the bit before lunch but this is the straw harrowed part and uh, but yes there'll be some real interesting differences uh, when we get the combine in so this plot is the other strip drill the sumo dts and uh, i must admit it's always struggled here looking at the plant counts and the and the plant density here uh, there was quite a lot of soil disturbance and it didn't like the wet conditions um, so much. So this was before lunch in the good conditions. And then here is uh, also before lunch in the straw harrow. So it hasn't made too much difference there. You can see the harrowing. And then we move here. That's the dividing line there. This is now after lunch in the wetter conditions. And again, straw harrowing hasn't really made much difference there uh, either. But it is definitely uh, better this side few holes there but it is better this side before lunch now moving on to the first of the disc drills and this is the avatar horse avatar and again plant counts here were good maybe one of the better ones as well but it doesn't quite look so even here as it did do um but again yields obviously going to be everything but this is before lunch in the unharrowed area and that is uh, before lunch where we had the straw harrow across it that plot and again you can't see much line the line will be somewhere at the top of the screen now and there isn't anything there uh, so it hasn't really improved it then walking uh, down the plot this is uh, after lunch now just got one little indentation there can't quite see it from the camera of the um, wheelings and things but again not much difference it did put it in very well after lunch when we had the rain so that's uh yeah really impressive there that's good and then this is before lunch and so again um uh, sorry this is after lunch without the harrow so not too much difference uh, in both sides but but impressive second of the disc drills here is the horizon dsx little bit gappy again in just in places but generally quite good good plant counts as well when they were done when it germinated and this is the area before lunch without the rake that is before lunch with the rake and again can't really see much difference there no lines there is on like there's on some of the other drills walking along that is the line now now this is where we were after lunch after the rain that's just a wide wheeling but again not too much difference a little bit here you can just see a line there top of the screen now that's the edge of the straw harrowing so it has made a little bit of difference here and then back to this side this is um after lunch but without the straw harrow the last of the disc drills is the um sky easy drill doesn't look quite as even as it did earlier on there a few little uh, gaps but it, it it has looked good all the way along i must admit and there's been some decent plant counts here as well this is obviously before lunch in the good conditions and without the straw harrow and this is uh 
before lunch with the straw harrow. Again, not too much difference there. And then moving along here, we are now into the after lunch plot where we had some rain, straw harrowed area there, not too much difference. And then turning around here, this is the area that was uh, after the rain or during the rain and without the straw harrow. Quite good really there. And then into the last plot here, this is the little three meter Simtech T-SEM, three meter mounted um, time drill. Struggled at this end of the field. Quite a few holes here you can see, and it was down on plant numbers, the same as the Sumo. Uh, it didn't really like these conditions too much, but I know some people get on well with the drill. So this is before lunch. It was only three metres, so it was a narrow plot. Um, and then turn around, you can see there, still struggled there after lunch, and that's with a straw harrow, so the harrow didn't make too much difference there. And then, yeah, you can see, Plant counts down there and then turn around here. This is the area we've got before, sorry, yeah, um, after, after lunch, but without the straw harrow. And then the traffic cones here, this just denotes the area. This is the tram line here. I've just walked down where we've, uh, where we've got the harrowing up to. So obviously we need to get these cones out of the field. So yeah, interesting uh, look around some of the plots. It looks like we're about to get rain again, or, or uh, we had five millimeters last night. It is now Wednesday evening. So that's it. That's the end of looking at the plots. Um, some of them you can see are looking quite good. This is the Horizon DSX plot here, looking good as the disc drills have. Um, but yeah, this is the last look before harvest. Hope you've enjoyed all this look around the, the plots and the trials and all the work that we've done here. I think we've got some, we've seen some fascinating changes to the establishment of all the machines. Um, obviously, the yield's going to be the one at the end of the day. Uh, we have done some ear count numbers, but I'll let you know all the final numbers um, afterwards when I do a full sort of resume um, on here. Uh, but generally, I'm really happy. Uh, I was happy with the day, how it went apart from the rain after dinner. But really, that was, uh, that was no different to us in the farm situation, the challenges we all face when we're trying to, trying to direct drill. So we'll, uh, we'll give a full resume and next time in here. Uh, on uh, on Wardy's Waffle on a farm update will be when we've got the combine in the field which is going to be interesting so until then thank you all very much for watching thank you for all your fantastic questions and your support uh, and uh, it's great to have some interaction with you all um, and until the update next update which I think will be Sunday that's when I'll do the next one we'll be into combining then um, and until next Sunday thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed it click like subscribe the bell sound and we'll see you next time.